Kyle Erich will be reviewing set 76261 Spider-Man Final Battle. This set released August 1st this year, retails for 110 euro with 9 minifigures, 7 of which being currently exclusive to this set. Starting off pretty basic, you get MCU Spidey in his integrated suit, which is the exact same minifigure featured in the Sanctum Workshop from the original No Way Home Wave in 2021, so if you missed out on that set, good news. However, to slightly differentiate this figure, he also comes with his face print and hairpiece from the 2021 LEGO Marvel CMF series in this set. I will say though, it would have been nice to get an alternate face print that's sort of a battle damage look, similar to Kate Bishop from this year's Marvel CMF series. Surprisingly, this set gave us our first ever retail Amazing Spider-Man 2 minifigure, since the only other Tasm 2 minifigure was a 2014 SDCC Comic-Con exclusive minifigure. Of course, the head has brand new printing on the front and back to properly represent the Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit. The torso and back printing of Andrew Garfield's iconic Spider-Man symbol, which always reminds me of the Raimi suit, which we'll get to in a minute. While the legs are dual molded, it would have been nice to also get leg printing and maybe even a little bit of arm printing for the web patterns on the boots and sleeves. Just like Tom Holland's Spider-Man minifigure, Andrew Garfield's Garfield's minifigure also has face printing and a hairpiece to represent the actor in Lego form. All in all, this figure is so much better than the 2014 Comic Con exclusive. The printing quality is night and day. For the first time in nearly 20 years, we finally got a brand new Tobey Maguire Spider Man minifigure. The head has brand new printing that perfectly represents the Raimi suit in Lego form, although the lenses on the mask look kind of weird, but that's probably just due to the Raimi suit having very unique lens. Again, the torso and back printing perfectly represent the suit in Lego form, but just like the Amazing Spider Man minifigure, arm printing and leg printing would have been nice instead of just dual mode legs, but it still looks good nonetheless. Just like the other two Spideys, Toby also has his face print and hairpiece. Once again, a near perfect Spider-Man minifigure. When it comes to accessories for the three Spideys, this set includes a web piece pack for all three of them, along with white power blast pieces represent webs being shot off the web shooters. Interestingly enough, the MJ minifigure in this set actually has a brand new torso print, which is kind of similar to a jumper she wears in the third act in No Way Home, but the face print and hairpiece are the exact same as the MJ minifigure included in the Sanctum Workshop from 2021. Not a bad minifigure to get overall, especially for the new torso print. Oddly enough, this is our first Ned minifigure since the Far From Home accessory pack in 2019. Using the exact same hairpiece and face prints, although similar to MJ, he has a completely brand new torso print introduced specifically for the set. Once again, not a bad minifigure to get overall. Overall. A weird tidbit about this minifigure is that LEGO actually messed up with this Doctor Strange minifigure, as he included his Multiverse of Madness minifigure instead of his more accurate Infinity Saga minifigure, like in the Sanctum Workshop from 2021. The hair piece is super accurate with white streaks of hair on either side. The front face print has a slight smile, while the alternative face print has an angry expression. The cloak of levitation is the same soft plastic mold introduced back in 2021 with the Sanctum Workshop that can be removed or added to minifigures without having to remove their heads like most LEGO kids. And if you're wondering, this is why Ned Ned looks like wearing the cloak. The torso and back printing once again are based on the Multiverse of Madness suit design, and the leg printing has a rope design from the torso continued. For accessories, Doctor Strange has two disc pieces to represent his magic, and the Machina de Cav Cadavas, and the Machina de Cadavas, or however you pronounce that, which is an unprinted satin green Lego Minecraft head with stickers, which is incredibly annoying. It's just really damn frustrating to line up the stickers properly, and without a doubt, should have been a and without a doubt should have been a printed piece. Again, while this is a great minifigure, it's completely inaccurate to the original movie. Though let's be real, this was simply to save money on Lego's end, because why put a retired minifigure from 2021 back in production? You can just reuse the currently available Doctor Strange minifigure on store shelves for cheaper, which isn't exactly the most consumer friendly move. Similar Similarly to Tobey Maguire, this is our first Willem the Dafoe Green Goblin in roughly 20 years. And it could have been better. The hair piece is the same one used for Han Solo since 2016, but in dark brown. The front face print is a smirk with its goggles down over his eyes, while the alternative face print is a sort of crazed expression, which really managed to capture Willem Dafoe's likeness in Lego form. The twister print has the purple cloak over the green goblin armor with added belts and pouches that continue to the back, and unfortunately, there's no leg printing. For an accessory, green goblin has a pumpkin bomb that maybe could have used printing on the orange head for added detailing. Honestly, the only thing holding this figure back is the lack of leg printing and maybe arm printing. It would have also been nice to have a purple fabric piece for the cloak, and maybe his purple hood too, who is an added bonus. Better than that, this minifigure is fine, but could definitely use a lot of work. Doc Ock, on the other hand, is pretty much perfect. He uses the same hair piece as Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. The front face print has a smiling face, while the alternative face print is a much angrier expression. Doc Ock's arms are connected by the Outrider back attachment, and are made out of ratchet joints, just like the Raimi Doc Ock minifigure from the 2000s. The twister print has an open jacket design with the belt of the arm showing. The 
back print is pretty basic with the base of the arm sticking out of the jacket. The leg printing is again very basic with the jacket printing continuing to the legs and shoe printing. Honestly, and despite the simplicity of the minifigure, this is easily one of the best minifigures of the year, as well as just generally being one of the best Doc Ock minifigures of all time. Believe it or not, but this is actually the second Jamie Foxx minifigure, with the previously being a polybag from 2014. The hairpiece is the same one used for Val Zod and Sam Wilson's Captain America from the 2021 Lego Marvel CMF series. The face print has Electra's mask made of electricity with a neutral expression, which, personally, I would have preferred a more expressive face print since this set is basically a diorama without the 18 plus branding and is, you know, supposed to be a battle, so you would think he would be more expressive. The neck attachment has these electric pieces connected that were introduced for Ninjago Dragons Rising this year. As an interesting tidbit, they used the Mind Stone as part of the electricity build, so if you were still missing the Mind Stone, you get some extras in the set. The toaster print has this detailed arc reactor printing that continues to the back. The leg printing is really basic with pocket printing, and for accessories, Electro has two light lightning bolt pieces. Again, another great minifigure, although this Electro minifigure could become available in another No Way Home set next year, so keep that in mind. Right off the bat, the build itself is honestly amazing. Spectacular, even. The base of the set is very reminiscent of the plinths used for the LEGO Star Wars diorama sets. The scaffolding, as you can imagine, wraps around the head of the Statue of Liberty, with various points to attach minifigures to a set connection, having the minifigures hang from the scaffolding by their hands, or connecting them to action post pieces scattered throughout the build. You even have Peter's camera set up to snap a photo of the battle in classic Spider-Man fashion, one of the antidotes connected to a large web piece, and various tools left around on the scaffolding. The generator builds are fairly simple but are prone to just falling apart which isn't the best although the main point of these builds are to connect these bent translucent pieces to so you can have electro floating in the air as well as having green goblin flying on his glider or you could connect them to the technicals of the back of the statue's head speaking of its glider this might just be the best version of green goblin's glider in lego form it's just the right width while also managing to remain sleek it's also interesting that they use the spearheads from prime empire in blue for the flames coming out of the glider's exhaust the build also has a couple of Doctor Strange portals taken straight from Doctor Strange's interdimensional portal poly bag, such as at the very top of the scaffolding and hidden at the back of the statue's head, but a sticker that shows the Sanctum Satorum with the cracks in the multiverse as seen in the final battle of No Way Home. Again, the design of the statue's head is great with a brick built face, stickers on like the crown of the statue, as well as on the statue's head. This part can also be removed to reveal a small bit of interior to store extra web parts, and even Sandman's hand, which again is a very simple build, although I think I speak for everyone when I say we should have gotten a Sandman minifigure instead of, well, this. The instructions have a blank CG render of the set at the front, a winnet at the back, Spider-Man running across a progress bar, and a neat easter egg using pink brick build up the inside of the statue's head. Kinda like a burn. Ultimately, while this set has a spectacular build and retail price, which is very surprising for modern LEGO sets, the main aspect of this set that stops it from being perfect is the minifigures. The lack of leg printing just really hurts the overall quality of the minifigures, which has been a problem with LEGO Marvel sets for a couple of years at this point, which has practically become a running joke, but there's still some standout minifigures in this set, such as Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, but again, the fact they just reused the Multiverse of Madness Doctor Strange minifigure instead of putting the 2021 minifigure back in production is such a lego move and just looks really sloppy on their part if you enjoyed today's video make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to stay notified for my future lego set reviews and if you want to help the channel financially consider becoming a channel member until next time see ya